Good afternoon everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Well after much maneuvering and manipulating I have managed to get the old Sears uh, D49 ADCC chainsaw mounted to my chainsaw mill. Um, there's the home light right there that I just took off. It's um, not so easy. I might end up changing that clutch anyway because the home lights clutch is reversed to this where the clutch is on the inside. Well, I probably can't. No, I can't because of the way this is designed. This is up in here. Getting the chain onto the clutch and getting the bar under here and fitting over these bolts was really quite a job. So I think once I get this power head on here, it's probably going to stay mounted. And what I'll do is how I did it with the home light on here is I take out a link. If I have to take a chain off, I take out a link on the mill. And then I refasten it on the mill. But there's not a lot of tolerance here. I could go with a little bit larger chain. A uh, couple more links for the next time around when I buy a new chain. But for today I just wanted to see if it would even get on there. Um, as you can see there is some some playroom a little but I just wanted to see if I could get it on there at all for today and it looks like I have it so I'm gonna um, play around a little bit more make sure the tensioner gets in there right and the bar fits and everything manually by hand works before I go ahead and try doing anything with this so we'll be back in a little bit and see what happens Okay, I got it on there. Let's see if it's going to run. on the on the bolts I gotta tighten that it runs be right back all right let's try it one more time might want to tighten the chain too like a kitten like a mad kitten what a machine now I gotta get some wood out here and see if this thing will run okay I took off the uh, fuel cap gasket I'm gonna go into town and get a new one I have to go to town anyway and drop off some mail so I'm gonna see if I can get an o-ring for this um, because it was dripping and we can't be losing fuel because I want to see what this thing is like without a fuel leak running nice and cutting some serious lumber so we'll be back in a while hey guys notice anything different here I was looking for the right tree to cut down I need to put up a roof for the mill so I chose this tree I've been thinking about it for a while anyway and I didn't want to drag a large piece of wood over so I took this one down and it dropped right precisely where I wanted it right along that board uh, thanks to Dr. Bill for the teaching me there um, 
You may notice my cuts are changing. My technique is changing. And I was able to guide and steer it right where I wanted it. I didn't want to hit the shed or the mill. And it was a big tree and is way out there. It's raining pretty hard, so I'm going to go in for a little bit and come back out. I don't want to wreck my equipment. I'm going to throw a tarp over the uh, saw. But a little piece, got a nice 8 footer, 7 8 footer. And that's going on the mill as soon as I come back out. If this rain stops, we'll be back out and we'll fire this up and run it. I got to cover my gear up. Okay, the rain was brief. I got the log up here and secured in place with the hooks. So I've got the slope side down so I can get as much meat off of this as I can. And uh, I'm going to start cutting. Unfortunately it hit the dirt here. But that's what they say is one of the advantages of a chainsaw mill over a bandsaw mill. The dirt's not as uh, bad on a chainsaw as it is on a bandsaw. I might even just hit that, cut that edge off. Not sure. Anyway, I'm going to tip this thing over. We'll fire it up and run it, see what it can do. Now I'm not 100% certain about the clutch teeth, so we'll see if this thing can handle it. I don't feel any slippage. The lubrication is working. I checked that. Um, you can see the spray off in there. Well, somewhere in there I saw it. Um, so, I'll tip it over and run it. I'm going to snip that off with my other chainsaw so it's not in the way. That lip is uh, throwing me off.
Well guys, there you have it. Um, this one runs a bit longer on a tank of gas, about almost three cuts. The other saw was only running uh, two cuts to a tank, so it's a little bit more efficient. It is a very, very tiny capacity, so it's not that expensive to run when you consider. So I think from now on, every two cuts, I'm just going to go ahead and fill the oil and the gas. I'm also going to mount another oiler on here, an external oiler out to the end of the bar to extend its life and uh, extend the life of the chain and I'm probably going to be even more efficient I'll probably get three whole logs to a tank when I get a brand new chain which I didn't get to today yet but I'm going to uh, I might still, no they're probably closed today I'll probably have to wait till Monday but the oiler works the thing is powerful it vibrates so, so I'm going to need gloves um, impressive. I'm very, very pleased with this old machine. Very good. The old C Sears D49, I was told, is what this is. And, uh, it's, it's a powerful, powerful machine. Really does a job here on this lumber mill. So, and I was cutting thicker. It wasn't a quite a fair comparison either. I'm cutting bigger logs. This is a bigger tree. So with the other log, I bet I get a little bit over three cuts to a tank. Um, much larger tree that I'm cutting. Larger diameter. So uh, you can feel the difference. You can seriously feel the difference with this bigger chainsaw on here. Old as it is, it still cuts really, really good. And I'm very pleased with it. Alright guys, um, pretty much going to be it. It's raining again on me. So this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and your off-grid project. Working with the old mill right. Chainsaw mill and an old Sears D49 80cc chainsaw making my own lumber. Part of becoming self-sufficient is to provide our own lumber and our own wood for construction. Please do like, subscribe and share follow our daily videos as we strive to become fully self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget.